Welcome to Poland Daily. In the next few episodes, we are going to take you around Kielce in the Holy Cross Mountains. We're going to talk to a statue of Jan Karski, see what it has to say. We are going to see the Bishop's Palace and all its splendor. And we'll look at a Stone Age quarry on the edge of town where Cro-Magnon man lived once upon a time and where we live now. After that, we'll stay the night in a beautiful fortress. Yes, we're going medieval, not only with the fortress, but also with two castles, Mirov and Bobolice. These are twin castles over on the edge of Silesia. That is where Sviantoshiska gives way to Silesia. Mirov is being renovated, and Bobolice is the splendid finished product. So, lots of excellent stuff ahead. Stay with us for more of Poland Daily Travel. Why do we do it? We do it for you. Like us on Facebook, Poland Daily Travel, and like us on YouTube at Poland Daily Live. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next edition of Poland Daily Travel. It's good to see you, to see you good. We are here in the heart of beautiful downtown Kielce in the Holy Cross Mountains in southern Poland. That's just on the top of Lesser Poland, which is where it all began. And uh, I suppose it's one of my favorite areas of, of Poland and of Europe, the Holy Cross Mountains. So it's worth coming to Kielce. It's not the most beautiful town in the world, but it doesn't matter. There are some things about it which are compelling, particularly its location. It's uh, right in the middle of uh, one of the oldest geological parts of uh, ge uh, geological uh, areas of Poland in the sense of the mountains, uh, the Holy Cross Mountains being extremely old, millions of years old, and whittled down by time to become the hills that they are now. They're more hills than mountains, that's right. And uh, as always happens, that's the river Szelnica behind me by the way, which is where the town grew up. And I'm on the crossroads. Before I talk about this gentleman, or the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, what this figure represents, the gentleman this figure represents, I will tell you that we're in the center of the town. This is Lice Sienkiewicz. Every town has one. That's named after Henrik Sienkiewicz, the famous writer. And Ulice Planty, uh, which is going along, uh, along the rather tame and bucolic River, uh, Shilnitsa. At any rate, um, one of the great surprises is when you run across something which is well worth telling in your travels. This figure represents the personage of Jan Karski, and it's a personage because he was a huge World War II figure. Um, it is hard uh, to think of people who would be uh, on a higher level in World War II, and I include anyone, uh, than this fellow. I mean, there are other people on that same level, but they don't make them like they used to when it comes to a fellow like Jan Karski. Uh, what did you do? Why is he so important? Well, I'm going to read you something. That's why I've got to keep my phone active, because it's very important what I'm going to read you to, to tell you something about the measure of the man in his own words. But during World War II, he was working for the Home Army, that's the AK, the Army Krajowa in Poland. He was one of their, uh, let me say, one of their main agents, if you will. And he became the prime liaison uh, in the early war with the government in exile in London. This was an important position because what he was, what he was charged with was to get the message out of Poland about what the Germans were doing the kind of atrocities they were performing, the camps they were building, and the people they were murdering, uh, uh, capturing, uh, relocating, in many cases murdering, or putting in work camps. Um, most, any of you can look up that history, but uh, uh, this fellow, um, it is hard to encapsulate. He grew up, uh, um, it's hard to encapsulate exactly what he did <laughs> in mere words. Uh, it makes a, an Errol Flynn swashbuckling film or an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie uh, look like child's play, child's imagination. What he actually did was personally 
go into these, uh, these situations, the camps, the ghettos, uh, on more than one occasion, and report back firsthand. It was not enough to, uh, to just rely on what people were telling him. He had to do it firsthand. And I'll just read uh, what he said about uh, being smuggled into the Warsaw ghetto. And mind you, he wasn't Jewish. He was brought up a Catholic. But he lived in a Jewish neighborhood, so he always felt a close affiliation. Because if you don't know this about Poland, and a lot of people seem not to know this today, that once upon a time there was a huge Jewish population in Poland and a Catholic population, and they lived very happily side by side. And if you don't believe me, there's plenty of, there's plenty of literature on the subject, and I can tell you that uh, that is what indeed Richard Kapuscinski himself told me about growing up in Pinsk in what is now Belarus, it was then Poland, that people used to just grow up together. And they got along. They weren't, they weren't uh, looking at each other and saying, oh, here's all, let's count all the differences between us. Not all, but most. There are always exceptions. Please, there are always exceptions. Everybody knows that. It's not perfect, and one bad apple spoils the bunch, as they say. But anyway, here's what he said when he went into the... Warsaw Ghetto. I'm sorry I didn't memorize it. It's worth memorizing, uh, but this, uh, this uh, performance is a little more extemporaneous than that. At any rate, here were the words of Jan Karski. My job in the ghetto was just to walk and observe and remember the odor, the children, dirty, lying. I saw a man standing with blank eyes. I asked the guide, what is he doing? The guide whispered, he's just dying. I remember degrada degradation, starvation, and dead bodies lying in the street. We were walking the streets, and my guide kept reporting, look at it, remember, remember. And I did remember the dirty streets, the stench, everywhere, suffocating, nervousness. So he was going back from 1940. He was reporting on these, uh, these events. He also eventually went uh, to London. He also went eventually to uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau and, and observed there posing as an Estonian guard. He, he was not there. Uh, uh, he was not captured there. He had been captured and escaped earlier uh, from uh, Novi Sanc uh, in southern Poland. And uh, uh, so he had been tortured and escaped the Nazi before. So he knew exactly, personally, what was going on and from observation. But the interesting thing is, even having been in that position, uh, being captured, he still felt he needed to witness himself. Because of this close link he felt with his childhood neighborhood, growing up in basically Jewish neighborhood as a Catholic, he felt a brotherhood and a bond. A lesson any of us uh, could learn from. and. Uh, a great man. He uh, also uh, went on to uh, go to London and, and reveal uh, what he had seen in the various places, but uh, anyone who knows the story knows that no one believed that this was even possible, that the, that the Germans, uh, brother Europeans, could be this uh, incalculably uh, murderous. Nice uh, cue by the birds. <laughs> At any rate, uh, it's, it's a true story, it's a riveting story, and uh, Jan Karski is one of the great heroes of the 20th century, I would say. Not supposed to say heroes these days. I'm going to say it, heroes. You don't have to like it, but it's true. And sometimes you have to, you have to take your hat off and uh, give respect where it's due to greatness. And he certainly is greatness, personified. Jan Karski. We're here, we're in Kielce. We're going to go around and look at some more of the city in the Holy Cross Mountains. I'm Will, and thanks for watching.